Welcome to the Fly Fishers International Learning Center's Beginners Fly Tying Workshop presented by the Fly Tying Group. This workshop will go over the fly tying tools that you will need to tie flies, what flies we tie and what they are imitating, and we will present how to tie the woolly bugger and the elk hair caddis. So, what is fly tying and why do we tie flies? Helen Shaw, an American professional fly tyer and fly tying instructor, defined it as the simple process of binding various materials to a hook with thread. <laughs> the satisfaction of catching a fish using a fly you tied. The ability to tie the fly to match the prey that your quarry is feeding upon. Dry fly fishing originated in America by Theodore Gordon designing a Catskill style dry fly such as the one here. Over time, various other dry flies were developed, such as the Mayfly uh, Parachute and a Comparadun Sparkle Dun style. This is an adult Mayfly that live in lakes and streams. What we do as fly tires, we tie uh, on a hook, we match the body, the wing, and the size of the hook to what we call match the hatch. Another important fly is the caddis dry fly. The Henryville Special is an excellent caddis fly imitation developed in the 30s in Pennsylvania Pocono Mountains. The Chuck Caddis, popularized by Eric Leiser. The most popular caddis imitation is the Elk Hair Caddis, developed by Al Troth. These adult caddis insects, as you can see, have a tent wing shape. Their wings closely resemble a moth or a butterfly. Wet flies imitate a transitional stage from the mayfly nymph or caddis larvae to an adult insect. Many wet flies imitate a struggling nymph as it attempts to reach the surface of the river. Here are three popular nymphs, the red fox squirrel nymph, the prince nymph, and the most popular out of the three is the gold rib hare's ear. These flies imitate the immature mayfly insect that lives in the water. During the summer months, we will fish insects that live on the land that are called terrestrials, such as the Dave's Hopper, which imitates a grasshopper. Or even foam beetles that imitate, of course, beetles. Another type of fly that we tie are called uh, streamers. This is a lefty deceiver, a muddler minnow will be next, and uh, the black ghost. All these type of flies imitate a different type of fish or generalization of a small fish. Fly tying vices. You can have a simple cam vise or you can pay more and have a full rotary function of vice, but the main purpose is just to hold the hook. There are advantages to owning a rotary vice. Number one, you're able to just rotate the hook and apply your materials. The bobbin is used to hold your tying thread. The thread is used to secure the materials to the hook. First we take our spool of thread and we will put it into the thread holder. Then we'll take the thread 
and use a threader slipping the thread threader through the tube and then the thread will be put through the loop of the threader and pull the threader through the tube now the bobbin is loaded with thread now what we want to do is to secure the thread to the hook shank so once again we just keep tying the thread over the tag end and the thread is now secure the half hitch tool is another way to finish off the fly the half hitch knot is a simple knot first what you do is wrap your thread two times around the half hitch tool put it near the eye and pull the thread over the eye two times one two over the eye and then pull here's a close-up of it two times and then let it slide over the tool and over the eye another tool to tie off the fly and finish the knot at the head is called a whip finish tool start off on a bear shank hook uh, and follow the video as closely as possible and keep practicing this this puts a really good secure knot anywhere on the sh on the fly scissors for fly tying have large loops to fit our fingers Hackle pliers are pliers that hold a feather or hackle to be wrapped around the shank of the hook. We take the hackle and we clamp it down in our hackle pliers. This is a rotary hackle plier and as you see all we do is just rotate it around the shank of the hook. In this case this is a palmer rib going through the body towards the bend of the hook. What, we, what you need to know is uh, you have to keep the feather taut and nice even wraps through the body, watching out for the point of the hook. The hair stacker is used to even up the tips of hair from elk or deer hair for bucktail streamers, elk hair caddis, and other flies that use deer hair or elk hair. To use the hair stacker, select some elk hair in this situation uh, or deer hair, uh, about match to a match and a half thick. Trim it from the butts. Comb out the underfur from the deer hair or elk hair and I'll just keep saying elk hair in this situation now take the tips and stick it in the funnel of the hair stacker once the tips are in the funnel give a couple of taps on the top of the funnel hold it down and bang on a flat surface slide the tube off and you will notice all the tips are now all lined up. Now we'll take the hair, grabbing them from the tips, and we'll bring them to the hook where we're going to add the wing. I do not let the tips extend past the bend of the hook. Give a couple of good tight wraps using the pinch method. And for an elk hair caddis, I like to separate the butts to form a nice even head. That's the hair stacker. Parts of the hook. It's best to know what the parts of the hook are because um, when you're learning to tie, all the materials and proportions are based on each part of the hook, such as the shank, the gap, the bend, and the eye. Hooks are the skeleton for tying flies. Hooks, hook sizes uses a, use a numerical label. The lower the number, the larger the hook. Size 24 is smaller than a size 1, and X is used to indicate the difference in hook shank length. Example of a package of hooks. You get the model number, the hook use, whether it's a nymph or a wet fly or dry, length and size, and quantity.
When we look at uh, hook lengths, we see there are various differences where the top one is a 4x long hook used for either nymph or streamers, and the bottom is your standard dry fly hook. Here we're going to see different hook styles where you'll see a 4x long nymph hook, a standard dry fly hook, and a 7x streamer hook with a limerick bend. Reason to debarb your hook. It's just easy to remove the hook from the fish's mouth. There, you can purchase hooks already debarbed or you can mash the barb with a pair of pliers or use your vise to mash the barb down. How to debarb your hook by using your vise. With your vise, jaws of the vise, place the hook uh, in the vise, but do not lock the jaws. Semi close it and just roll the hook in the jaws. This is how you can mash down the barb of your hook. How to put a hook in the vise. First, you would like to get the hook at the bend, in between the bend and the barb, as so, then clamp it down, but also make sure your hook shank is level. Now it is time to learn how to tie your first flies, the woolly bugger and elk hair caddis. Both of these flies are in the Fly Tying Groups Award Program. For your first fly, we will teach how to tie the woolly bugger. This is the material list for the woolly bugger. For the hook, I will be using a size 8 3x long bodied nymph hook from Dairichi. For the thread, we will use a 6o olive pre wax thread. For the ribbing of this fly, we will just use fine copper wire. For the body, we will use medium light olive chenille, which uh, is sold in packages and put on cards, which is basically a cotton material or other kind of synthetic fiber uh, woven into, twisted onto a thread. Next is the dark olive marabou feather. Marabou comes from the uh, from a turkey. It's the blood feather, and it is very webby and has a lot of action in the water. For the palmer hackle, we will use a uh, grizzly from a rooster. So this is a rooster neck. We will place the hook in the vise uh, at the point where it's at between the bend and the barb of the hook. Then we will make sure that the shank of the hook is parallel to the floor or to your tying desk. Now we'll attach the tying thread to the hook. Press it up against the shank of the hook, wrap over it, lift the thread, your tag end, 30, about 30 degrees, and then take your thread and just run along the tag. And then turn around and cut the tag. Now we'll take our thread and bring it and lay a base of thread on the shank of the hook. Bring our thread to the bend and then back towards the eye stopping one eye length away from the eye. Step 3. Tying in the marabou tail. Select a marabou feather from the bag, stroke it backwards, uh, measure it to the shank of the hook. You can also wet your fingers and stroke, stroke the feather uh, to the tips, 
then measure it to the shank of the hook that'll keep all the material together and then mark it with your thumb and index finger from your right hand and switch it to your left hand at the bend then take your left your right hand and move it to the front of the uh, feather and secure it in place now trim the excess that's hanging over the eye by doing this we will have a nice even body so now take thread and bring it to the bend of the hook lashing the material to, to the bend holding the marabou feather to the top of the shank of the hook uh, one more uh, pass go forward and back and end your thread at the bend of the hook Step 4. Tying in the copper wire for the rib. Take about 2 inches or 3 inches of the copper wire. Do not cut it with your scissors. Wiggle it back and forth so that it will break by fatigue. And then secure it under the shank of the hook. Just catch it with your thread under the shank. Run your thread mid shank and then back towards the bend of the hook securing the copper wire at the bend of the hook. Step 5. Tying in the chenille and making the body. We will take uh, a few inches of olive uh, medium chenille and we will prepare the chenille and secure it to the body. Next we will take the chenille and before we tie it at the bend, we're going to strip the chenille from the thread uh, so that we're just tying right, just tying the thread to the shank of the hook. This will help make the body nice and level and not give it a bump at the bend of the hook. Then we'll bring our thread to the eye of the hook. Now we'll take the chenille and wrap it away from our body, go underneath the shank and up over the shank and we will do touching wraps and we will also make sure that the chenille is uh, laid flat not twisted as we go and create the body. So each wrap is touching as we go towards the eye of the hook and as we are wrapping we're trying to make sure that the chenille is level uh, from the bend towards the eye of the hook. We will take the chenille to about an eye length away from the eye. We will uh, hold the chenille in our right hand and take our left hand and bring the thread over the chenille to tie it off. About three or four good uh, tight wraps. Then we'll take our scissor and trim the chenille. I will take a grizzly hackle from a rooster neck. You could use a saddle, uh, not a hen. Hen is too webby. Uh, when I wrap this around the shank of the hook, the barbs should not extend too far past the point of the hook. Next, I will peel the webby section off this uh, hackle. Uh, the webby section, as you can see here, that's the prime section where it's nice and stiff. The webby section uh, is usually towards the back end of it so what I'll do is peel the web from the stem of the hackle. Now we're ready to attach the hackle to the fly. Now we'll secure the hackle in place. What we're going to do now, I'm going to show you that as you bend the hackle around the body you'll see that the barbs will just extend past the point of the hook by a little bit such as maybe a, a half a gap and we'll take the stem and we'll put it underneath the shank of the hook and take the thread and pull it up to catch the stem once we catch the stem we'll put three or four different wraps and then we'll cut the stem off now we'll take our hackle plier and uh, attach it at the tip of the hackle as shown here I'm just going to clamp it on and then what I'm going to do is two wraps in the front of the fly right behind the eye 
and one and here's here's two and now I will go, start going towards the bend of the hook but I will do as each wrap as I go towards the bend it will be equal spacing from the eye to the bend of the hook we like to try and get about five or six wraps in there depending on the length of the feather as you can see it's nice and even spacing and I'm getting to the bend of the hook so my last uh, turn will be at the bend and I will hold the hackle in place at the bend for the next step step seven wrapping the copper wire now we'll from where we left off holding the tip of the hackle we're going to take the wrap, copper wire wrap two wraps at the bend trapping the tip of the hackle and then we're going to wrap the copper wire towards the eye wiggling it back and forth trying not to catch the barbs that are sticking out from the chenille and the copper wire will reinforce the hackle what we're trying to do once again is nice even spaces about five or six wraps over the chenille and then we will end at the eye of the hook and we will take the thread and put about four good hard wraps at the uh, where we left the, co the copper wire and then we will helicopter it wiggling it back and forth until it breaks free sometimes it could be a little tough but just wiggle it back and forth and it will break free step eight we're going to finish the fly first we're going to pull the fibers back wrap a bunch of wraps to form a head at right behind the eye and then we're going to take a half hitch tool and create a half hitch knot right behind the eye so what we do is we wrap two times around the half hitch tool slide the, the knot right over the eye one two slide it right over or you could use a whip finish tool as I've shown in uh, previous slides uh, one two the best way to learn how to do this is really on a bare shank hook now what we're going to do is take that hackle uh, tip that is extended at the bend of the hook where we tied off we'll take it away from the marabou and then we'll take our scissors and just snip it right on off trying not to cut too much of the marabou or any of the hackle fibers that are at the bend of the hook next we will take our bodkin the needle dip it in head cement and put a drop of cement right at the eye of the hook this is now the finished woolly bugger materials for the elk hair caddis we will need a dry fly hook 6-0 brown thread fine gold wire brown hackle and elk hair so I'm going to use a, for this a size 10 dry fly hook 6-0 brown thread rooster hackle brown elk hair for the wing and we can use a super fine uh, 10 dubbing right out of the package or we can make our own right from a hair's air mask with the ears and throw the uh, fibers in a blender to make the dubbing and for the ribbing we're going to use fine gold wire placing the hook in the vise we will place the hook in the jaw between the bend and the point of the hook and make sure the shank of your hook is level to your table attach your tying thread to the hook and tie in the gold wire first we will 
tie our thread about an eye length back from the eye and then trim the tag. Next we'll take about four to five inches of uh, gold wire, secure it under the shank of the hook and run your thread to the bend securing the gold wire wire to the bend of the hook. Step 3. Learning how to dub fur and create a body. Uh, some people have problems with uh, dubbing fur so I added a little uh, wax to the thread. Now we'll take some super fine tan dubbing fur. We will take some out of the package, but what I'm going to show you is less is better. So take even more, less from the package. Uh, you could practically see through the dubbing. And then what we're going to do is twist it on the thread in one direction. What we are doing is we're creating a very fine dubbing noodle by twisting it in one direction on the tying thread. So we're going to get a, a pretty good length of uh, dubbing to create the body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this dubbing noodle uh, at the bend of the hook and then we're going to start creating the body going forward towards the eye of the hook. Now the caddis fly that we're, that we're tying is usually thicker in the back and as we go towards the head which would be the eye of the hook it will be thinner. So we will keep adding more fur and repeating this process several times until we get to the quarter of the uh, shank of the hook away from the eye. Step 4. Tying in the hackle. Now we'll take a hackle from a rooster neck. What we need is a what is called a hackle gauge. This hackle gauge also ha can measure the hook and tell you the size of the hook. But what, it, what we like to do is this one has a pin on it and all these lines. So these lines are when the, we bend the hackle around the pin, the hackle uh, tips will hit a line. So I'm going to take a um, hackle feather. I'm not going to pull it off because if it's the wrong one, I don't want to take it. I'm going to bend it around the pin as shown, and I'm going to look to see where the uh, tips uh, hit. So this hackle uh, bends around the pin, and it's actually for a size uh, 10 uh, hook. What I'm going to do is uh, look for another one uh, down lower, and I'm going to want to get between a 10 and a 12 so that we could use it. So I bend it around the, the pin, see that the uh, tips uh, hit the, the, the line that I'm looking for. Then I'll pull it off the cape. Then I'll look at the feather and I'll, what we have to do is strip the webby uh, part of the feather and you can see this is a good feather where we can see the webbiness where it was that black stripe. So what we would do is stroke the feather so that the barbs are perpendicular to the stem and then what we're going to do is peel those barbs off so we do not use them. And then I'll just cut the uh, rest of the stem off and the feather is uh, ready to be used for the elk hair caddis. Now, now we will take the hackle and we will uh, place it under the shank of the hook and let the thread catch it under the shank and put a few wraps to secure the hackle in place right by the dubbing. Then take your scissors and cut the hackle stem. 
Next we'll take our hackle pliers and we'll attach the hackle pliers to the tip of the hackle and what we're going to do is wrap two times in the front and then we're going to work our way back palmer ribbing the hackle and making sure we have nice even spaces in between each of the wraps. We're going to try to get at least uh, five or six good wraps through the body and then we will stop it at the bend of the hook. Step 5. Using the gold wire to rib the fly. Once we have the hackle at the bend, we're going to take the gold wire and wrap it two times around the bend, securing the hackle. And then we will take our hackle pliers off the hackle. And now we'll take our gold wire and uh, evenly space wrap through the body and try not to trap the uh, hackle uh, fibers uh, with the wire. By doing this, this really secures the fly, making it a nice durable fly. Now when we get to the uh, top, we will wrap two times, two or three times, and then we will just wiggle the wire back and forth and it will break off. Now take your scissors and go and cut the hackle tip off at the bend of the hook. Step 6. Tying in the L care wing. Stacking the L care to make the wing. For the L care caddis, we're going to use, of course, L care. And the reason is L care um, is a little thicker than deer hair um, has, and buoyant. Here's a piece of uh, deer hair that I use for spinning. It's almost as thick as the L care, as you could see, between the uh, tips and the butts. Uh, and uh, you can use the uh, deer hair, and I'm going to get up a little closer, but they, there is a little thickness for the elk hair. The tips are a little uh, lighter. Here is some uh, coastal deer hair, which is uh, a lot thinner. Now we're going to take a uh, hair stacker, and what we're going to do is uh, cut some uh, hairs from the, from the hide about the thickness of a uh, or half the thickness of a pencil so I'll take the tips of my scissor and uh, take out as much as I'm going to need and I'm going to trim this right at the hide once this is uh, trimmed uh, there is going to be uh, under fur at the butts, so I'm going to take a comb, a small fine comb used for beards or, or mustaches, and I'm going to just comb it through the butts. And as you can see, there's some uh, under, under fur that has been removed. Now I'll take the tips and place them inside the hair stacker because we're trying to stack the tips, not the butts that we cut, because those are already. Um, cut and and lined up but it's the tip, fine tips that we want to use for the wing so now we'll just uh, hold the funnel in place and one couple of wraps on the table and we will be done now we will remove the L care from the hair stacker so we'll take the hair stacker we'll pull off the external tube and we'll see that all the tips have lined up uh, now we'll take the L care from the funnel and then place it on top of the hook shank and use the pinch method to uh, secure it in place. Also making sure that the tips do not extend past the bend of the hook. We'll take two or three good wraps using the pinch method. And then we're going to take a third of the butts and pass the thread through. Take another third, pass the thread through, and take the rest of them and secure and make a head at the eye of the hook. Then we'll take our uh, half hitch tool, wrap two times around, slide it right on over the eye. This will give us a half hitch knot. 
then or you can whip finish it uh, using a whip finish tool at least two three good uh, turns of the whip finish tool make sure the butts are out of the way then cut the thread with your scissors and then trim the uh, elk hair butts evenly to make a head and then what you can do is take a couple of drops of head cement and uh, right at the, the thread wraps and your fly will be done.